I love shoes in any shape and form. As a kid, it was my beloved trainers, blue suede with three white stripes. But as I grew up, so did the shoes. For me, shoes can be just like music, a perfect way of expressing your shifting identity. <laughs> it's so good. I'm Leanne Lahavas, and this is my private view of shoes, pleasure, and pain. I've just found this adorable statue of Aphrodite, 2,000 years old. And look at her feet. Platforms. I think I'm going to like this show. <laughs> so these shoes behind me represent wartime glamour. I I'm attracted to these because of the story. Around 1943, during the Second World War, um, when materials were in short supply, uh, these are an example of the way that people customised shoes. So apparently, a shoemaker in Kensington just cut up a client's old fur coat and stuck them on these glorious ankle boots, and this is the result. It's just great because it's made something really quite unique and special out of just the necessity. I've always customised things. I've always felt that I have to as well because what I want it to be doesn't seem to exist yet or it's not quite perfect for me. It's funny, when I was selecting a pair of shoes for today, uh, I was looking at all my shoes thinking, oh God, I better not bring that because it's just basically stuff that I've bodged myself. <laughs> so this is why these caught my eye, because it's, it's a much better example of how to do it. To me, they look like you, you could wear them now. I mean, they're totally flattering. I see boots like this on the high street, this shape, but nowhere near this quality. Um, today. I really love leopard print. I love it because it's a naturally occurring pattern in nature. It's amazing that it just is like that. I think natural patterns, they kind of have an effect on us, perhaps, that you wouldn't get from a man-made pattern. It's something to do with there being that bit of magic that it just is that way. So I love that. Anemone shoes. I love the word anemone, but also I love the shoe designer Christian Louboutin. And these are quite something. What I like about them is the fact that really the front of them is quite plain, so you have to appreciate them from the back. He's famous for having his red sole underneath the shoe, which again can only be appreciated if you're looking at them from behind. They're quite glorious. Silk satin, feathers and leather. He thinks a lot about how the entire body is going to look and how they'll make you stand, how they'll make your ankles look, how they'll lengthen your leg with that feeling of grace and elegance, but also power and status even, which is something I think about 
a lot with my own shoes. When I'm on stage, I never want to wear flats for some reason because I want to feel like I am in charge. Because they're so embellished and flamboyant, it reminds me of the image of like when you're a little girl trying on your mother's shoes or your grandmother's shoes, which I totally did. My amazing grandmother, my late grandmother, always wore heels and she was a Greek bombshell, absolutely gorgeous, like a Greek Marilyn Monroe, maybe, she looked. Um, but even up until her 90s, she always wore heels. Um, even her slippers had heels, but we happened to be the same size feet. So I used to try on her shoes and they fit perfectly. How beautiful are thy feet with shoes? That is so true. Here we have the red shoes. I know that there is a fairy tale behind them, or rather a sort of dark story where the shoes consume a ballet dancer and she can't stop dancing. And then I don't want to say the rest, it's quite upsetting. What happens? Uh, she encourages an executioner to chop off her feet to make the dancing stop. And the way they're hung, I found it interesting to look like dripping blood. There's a lot going on just by looking at them firsthand. So delicate and so, you know, innocent ballet shoes. You know, they're normally white or cream or baby pink. But then the fact that they're red uh, symbolises blood and danger and all these things that we associate with red. I happened to see the film Amy recently. These do really make me think of her. She kind of made them popular again to be a normal shoe. But as you know, it seems kind of poignant in a way. So it's kind of an amazing amount that you can get from just this pair of ballet shoes with some ribbons. So these are the very, very famous, iconic, I would say, Vivian Westwood shoes that Naomi Campbell notoriously fell over in on the catwalk. And I remember seeing this clip of her falling. Uh, it was probably when this happened. I was about four years old. But this is them. I've always wondered about the actual shoe. I did not know they were blue. They make me think of a few things that I want to talk about. This idea of height and platform and, you know, uh, the, the way they would make you probably stand, your posture, and also, you know, elegance as a female. But the fact that she fell over in them has given a whole new, shed a whole new light on the shoes. It's almost like shocking in a way to see her fall over, and you remember that she's human. For years, we found it quite funny, generally, when people fall over by accident. Also, I thought it was so charming, the way she, you see her in the photo here, that she's laughing, and she just was like, okay, I'm just gonna get back up, everything was fine. All eyes were on her, obviously. I think that's kind of, shows her strength, maybe, and, not letting the shoes defeat her. <laughs> it's a big ask to walk down a catwalk in front of hundreds of people who are taking snap after snap, you know, and just get back up and smile and look amazing falling over. <laughs> Solidity is important on stage. That's why I prefer something 
funnily enough, I prefer something like a platform when I'm on stage because they're heavy, you can kind of... Also, there's a sort of, I've just thought now, like a percussive element to it. I tap my foot when I'm playing. I can, I can feel this when I tap my foot. I can hear it so I can keep time. I've been lucky enough to try on a pair of Vivian Westwood heels once and they are quite something. When they're on, you feel unbelievable and they make your leg look amazing and they are amazing, so well made. But I didn't dare walk anywhere in them. It's funny how they almost hinder you. You're kind of afraid of them because they're so powerful. The shoe themselves on their own are just powerful. I've come across these rather odd looking tiny Chinese foot binding shoes. It's the first time I've ever heard about anything like this. It's quite, you know, it's quite a sinister backstory to these, but basically young women's feet or children's feet were bound to restrict the growth. I don't know why, why to look more dainty or or even uh, do they want to prolong them looking like children's feet or all these weird things that we wouldn't dream of doing right now i'm trying to comprehend how the foot would get into the shoe it's mental it pains me to say this even but apparently what they would do is to curl the four toes, leave the big toe, but curl the four toes underneath the foot, bind it with like a, a few feet long of bandaging or something, and then cram them into that shoe. And here's a photo, actually. I can't even get my head around that photo, to be honest. Do you know what? My feet are killing me. <laughs> looking at these. I don't think I'm going to take my shoes off. It's carpeted around here, so it should be fine. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> don't look at the inside of them. I've had them for ages. Here they are, though. I have to say, they're my faves, and that's kind of why I picked them for today as well. They've lasted a long time. To wear dreams on one's feet is to begin to give reality to one's dreams. That's pretty nice. I love these. I just, out of everything, these, I think they're just my favourite. They, they're the most, they're just beautiful. Um, I'd wear them out of everything. I'd probably live in those. So they're by Salvatore Ferragamo. Ferragamo brought the platform heel back into fashion in the late 1930s, which I'm very happy about. But it's just so perfect. Everything about it, it sort of sums up fun, elegance, you've got that height. It's got loads of character. It says apparently had Judy Garland in mind when he designed these uh, because of the technicolour and cinematic quality. Somewhere over the rainbow. And I can just see it all over, all over. So they're made of suede, gilded leather, leather and cork. The wedge part of the heel is decorated with lovely different colour suede and then the beautiful golden leather of the straps and then you've got kind of an open toe 
But I, I think that's the bit that makes them kind of a bit futuristic, is that there's a covered part of the open toe. So it's very, they're very structural, but still really feminine, but strong because of that chunky heel, which I love. Yeah, I love them. What can I say? Shall we smash the gloves? <laughs> Okay, so it's basically a pair of what was known as bath clogs um, worn all over the Ottoman Empire, almost like stilts. Young women would be paraded on these, on these very unusual shoes, almost like human statues, I guess, to be, you know, adored or sized up for inspection in a hammam, which I imagine would be quite slippery and wet and full of soap, so. Yeah, I mean, this title here even, it says, even when naked, which suggests that idea of a woman being an object. to be inspected by the groom's family, apparently, um, before they were to be married. I think it is a bit creepy testing the women before giving them away, I guess. I think you should just wear heels because you want to when you like them as with these bad boys. <laughs> so here I found what appears to be an incredibly early flip-flop. It's from Egypt probably about 2,000 years old, and I wanted to talk about it because <laughs> cause I really hate flip-flops. <laughs> but actually realise how practical they can be, and look how ornately decorated this one is. It's actually quite beautiful. I don't think I'd wear it myself, but it's absolutely amazing. And so, so delicate. 2,000 years old. The design has hardly changed in 2,000 years. So, I mean, they, they must have done something right. <laughs> I can't see it though. If you can see, there's a sort of, almost a leaf-like sole shape. And then you can see the strap or the thong, as I've recently learned it's called, going down to the, to the point where it meets the toes or the toe post and there's a beautiful gold, what is it? It's gold leaf and plant fibre and leather. It's gone together to make this ancient flip-flop. I'm sorry, it's just amazing. <laughs> I mean, far more beautiful than what we've got today <laughs> in the way of flip-flops. These are amazing by one of my favorite shoe designers, uh, Charlotte Olympia. They're called Bananas Is My Business Shoes. Um, I just, I love her creativity. And we've gone from, you know, 2000 year old flip flops to these beauties, suede leather and wood, There's always a little twist with her designs. There's always something just incredibly charming about them and you want them, you want to own them. You just want to even 
look at them. It's like you can almost imagine the feet in them. Like if you saw a woman in them, you'd just want them. It's that kind of covetousness of them. Um, I also am attracted to them because the fact that they are covered in fruit, it reminds me of like the Caribbean, like and my, you know, my family and stuff, just from an early age, being educated about all the different types of fruit. I always take pictures of markets and just tons of fruit and the colours and everything. I just love the way they look. Again, it's that natural beauty, I think, that occurs in, you know, only nature that is like so eye-catching, like a watermelon just looks amazing when you cut it open and pineapples and the way that the pineapple stalk is also a very functional kind of tab for putting on the shoe. I just think they're gorgeous. And then maybe the fact that she's got the wood, it kind of keeps it really organic. So it's like a whole piece. It just makes sense. These are like art. I love these. They are perfect. They're a perfect shoe. They're my second favourites. I've, I've absolutely loved this, to look around and appreciate all these shoes um, in all of their glory. Coming here, I don't know, it's just given a whole new, it's shed a whole new light on the significance of shoes. There's just so much you can get from it and it's it all ties into, you know, self-expression and fashion and shape and colour and all the things that I love. I'm going to dream about shoes and I'm going to be talking about it for a long time.